tutorial I'm going to be showing you a couple of tricks which will get your rendered movie out the door so much quicker. So the first one is split rigging. I've taken this model and I've split it into separate meshes. They're not separate, you know, um, islands. These are actually separate meshes. And each of these meshes has its own skin modifier and it's got its own morphers and flexes and deformers. Um, but because I've broken the model up into little pieces, I only need to work on those pieces. And so, for example, with my morpher, I don't need to store every single point for every single character. I just need to store the mesh for this deformation and this deformation from here. That's just the breathing. That's all that I'm storing and that's all I'm, I'm working on. So if you can imagine, I can actually send this off to another artist and they can be working on the facial morphs and the facial rigging and I can do the rest of the body and then just stick them back together. So how do we stick it back together once we've done all that? Because, you know, it's pretty crazy. Well, I just draw your attention to this. I haven't um, lined these up on purpose. See, there's a split between them. So you can see that, you know, there's a split here and there's a split here. It's not going to matter because I'm driving the master mesh, which is this mesh, uh, using a wrap deformer, or in 3ds Max it's called a skin wrap, which is just here. And I fed it the other meshes, those little uh, rigged part meshes, and each of those is then going to move, and as they move, it's going to drive that skin in called skin wrap. So as you can see, this guy is moving perfectly well, thank you. He's got no bones, he's got no morph targets, he's merely just following the mesh that's underneath. So if I unhide that mesh and just say, oh, and I grab the hand, you can see the master is trying to pull along with that as well. And if I then go in and just make a mesh change, you can see that the master changes as well. That's a terrible change. Anyway, so that's how you get a split mesh to come back together. Now, once you've done all that, you want to go in and create a point cache. Now, a point cache will store every vertex position for every frame for a range of frames. And it will store it as an XML file. So if you look here, I've got uh, 7,600 odd points, and each of those is being stored for one frame. Now, if I need to do um, sub frames for things like motion blur, uh, I can do it at, down here. And once I've done that, I hit record and bake the whole thing out, and then I'm free to uh, work on my render. Now, if I go into this file here, all this file's got in it is a single mesh, no bones, no morph targets, nothing, just a point cache. That's all it's got. So this mod model has a point cache. I then load that point cache in that I baked out in the other file. And then I can put on my Turbo Smooth to render out, my, to make my model look all sexy. And I'm ready to light and render. And what's awesome about this is there's nothing in my scene. It's just this model. But look, it's rendering and moving in real time. It's very happy. So I hope that really helps you. It's going to make a huge difference to the number of crashes you get when you do renders because really the more processes, the more calculations your file has to do, um, the uh, 3D application has to do on your file as it's rendering, the more likely you're going to crash. So this will be much quicker, much faster, much lighter, and you are welcome. I'm Delaney King. Thank you very much. Catch you later.